It's time for the movie rank. Tonight's victim is actor Vincent M. Ward that has played in The Walking Dead show, that has played in The Step Daddy. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Same old, same old. So tell us a little bit about Step Daddy as well as any other projects that you are currently doing that you are allowed to speak. Oh, well, the difference between the Step Daddy and all the other projects is it's my creation. <laughs> Basically, I've gotten tired of getting killed off of everything, so I've decided to reinvent a horror movie that I used to like called The Stepfather. Basically, a guy who's looking for love, but he can't seem to find that perfect family. There's always something that happens, and, you know, when things happen, he has to get rid of the family. Create The Stepdaddy, and we will begin filming December with Hillionaire, Hillionaire Productions with my man Thomas J. Churchill as he's coming aboard as well. We'll be getting filming very soon. I'll be handpicking some people that, that I know that's not only going to come in and be great actors and actresses, but they're going to be good people after you say cut. Sometimes you'd be on set for a long time and you want to be able to get along with people. You don't want a whole bunch of people just complaining and acting a fool afterwards. So I'm excited about it. It's horror, man. I, I, I love horror. Oh, that's fantastic, man. It's, and have you gone like through any kind of funding? Well, what, it, what happened was I, I found a movie earlier this year called Don't Shoot the Messenger. And it's just like the title. You know, some people be like, hey, I'm just delivering the message. Don't shoot the messenger. And I end up hooking up with them, which is all this Helium Air Productions. And they were looking for a horror, you know, to, to put out. And they remember me telling them about um, the stepdaddy as well as another horror that I created called Devereaux. And Devereaux is actually like a new age candy man. And then all of a sudden, candy man is coming out next year. But that's another story. But yeah, I'm with Billionaire. They're, they're going to be the executive producers on the step daddy. If a project is something similar that you've either seen or, of course, you haven't been involved with, I mean, how do you make it as something different to the audience to where they can feel like it's actual, uh, an actual difference? Well, you have to put your own twist on it. You have to put your own twist on it. I mean, with mine, you never really see a killer black, a black killer. You never see that. The only one you've ever seen was Candyman. So, I mean, that's, that's a big twist right there by itself. It, it's some things that are kind of the same as, as the stepfather. Pretty much a whole different family, you know, a black family. It's like looking at it on, from the black side. Not saying this is a black movie, because it's not. It's still just a horror. And I just want to scare the hell out of people, man. That's all I want to do. Uh, I remember years ago they had auditions for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I wanted to audition because I felt like you never saw his skin. Yeah, it was a white family, but you never saw his skin because he always had old gloves and, and a mask and all of that. And when I got turned down from that, I said, you know what, I'm a great bone. And then, you know, recently, these last few years, I kept getting killed off on everything. And then that really pushed me into creating my own. But honestly, I created Devil Oak before I created the step daddy. Uh, combining these influences between, like you mentioned, like you don't see a, a whole lot of a black killers and so forth, and then influenced by the horror films that you are, do you think sometimes it might actually bring up more negativity than anything else? Even though this is a horror film, this is something you like doing. Today's society is a little bit too sensitive on certain matters, but do you think this is going to be more welcomed than anything else? Uh, I think it will be welcomed because I've done so many horror films and shows now you know and if it's done i don't care you're not gonna make everybody happy i don't care if you're nice i don't care if you're mean i don't care if you're doing something positive it's always going to find you're always going to find somebody that's going to find a, have a problem with what you do if that, that part doesn't really bother me i just want people to feel like it's a great product i was scared frightened me I just want that, and I feel good about that. And to be able to not just talk about something, but to be about it, to make it happen, to step out on faith and make things happen. You know, because sometimes you get to a point that you have to do, create your own stuff. You can't just continue to make everybody else rich or popular. Or, you got to do your own thing, man. So that's why I started creating my own stuff, just like I created a traveling show called Conventioning. You know, once again, you only see white white men as the host. I mean, one thing I love to do is host. And yeah, this is going to sound weird, but I give up acting to host. Because one, you don't have to remember a lot of lines. Two, you can show your personality. And I think that's one of the, one of the, the gifts that I have 
is my personality and how I make people feel. Oh yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that because you you're not you're not just catering to the audience of what they want, but you have to give what you want in the, in the same manner because in a way you have to do some demanding of yourself out of yourself to begin with. Yeah, most definitely. Anthony Bourdain's job. Oh man, that's a dream job for me. I would love to be in in that position or take it as far as he took it because it's fun. I mean, think Think about it. You get the best of everything. You get to travel. You get to get eat the best foods in the world. Drink the best drinks in the world. You know, sightsee. Who wouldn't love a job like that? And you get to make people smile. You smile, make people happy, and show people different different places in the world that that they can travel. Also, you know, you don't have to be rich to always travel. I had a, I, I had created another show called Balling on a Budget, and I showed you how to still have a good time without worrying about your bills when you got home. Because a, a lot of times we'll go on vacations, you know, there's certain things that you want to do. You know, you might not go jet lining, you might not go jet skiing because it's an extra 50 or $60. But guess what? That's what Groupon or something is for. That's what get there before five o'clock is for. So you can still have a good time. Have you ever had a thought about actually teaching the younger actors in terms of uh, financial stability or even acting stability? Well, you know what? With, with young people, sometimes you got to show them, show them before you can talk to them. You know, yeah, they listen and be like, well, why would I listen to you? You haven't done it. So, you know, once this is completed, if somebody has for questions, I would definitely answer them. I feel like I'm in a position that for people can, they can, anybody can inbox me or call me or email me and ask a question. Because like when I, when I moved out to California, uh, 19 years ago, I didn't have anybody that I could ask questions about the industry, you know, so I learned on the fly or, or the hard way. Sometimes I think I would be a lot further in my career if I would have did this or if I would have done that. But you know, it's all about, for me, it's all about God's timing as well. Maybe if I would have got to where I wanted to be years ago, maybe I couldn't handle it then. You know, maybe I would have screwed it up some kind of way, you know? Who knows? And it's nice that it's a little bit easier in terms of trying to get better as an actor because first you got, believe it or not, you have to learn how to listen. You have to learn how to see. You have to learn how to speak before you could actually approach this role. You got, you have to feel it and, and there's, and along the way you have to become whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. You know, a lot of people always say, you know, I want to, I want to be the best. I want to take it to the next level. I want to do this. I want to do that. But most of them can't even handle the smallest stuff. If you can't be on time for the smallest stuff or you can't respect people or have your lines together, how are you supposed to handle the big stuff if you can't handle the small stuff? You can't. You've been screwed it up. I'd be doggone if I've been waiting all these years to finally get to have my own whatever. And then I mess it up on not being or alcohol or drugs or, or women. You won't hear that from me. No, I'm ready to be in that position to be able to teach, preach, motivate, inspire. Because when someone, I don't want any, be like, anybody be like, well, why would I listen to you? This is why you would listen to me because I'm showing you what not to do and but how to act as an actor, but how to act as a professional, to be how to be a professional. In this industry, it is it is beyond uh, really, really difficult in terms of that. It's not just playing the role. It's not just showing up to work. You have to put so much effort and so much passion. And, you you know, in terms of that over time, you, you yourself have to be able to aspire and inspire at the same time. I know these are two big words, and I know they're kind of faded and jaded in some aspects in, in the film industry. But at the same time, this is something you have to hold on to. This is something you have to progress as well as share. So everyone else could learn and respect in terms of getting this art down pat for themselves. Yeah. And another word that people don't use or live, or live by is loyalty. What, what happened to the loyalty? How, how is it that when you didn't have any money to really pay me and I was still there, still have my stuff together, but now, you know, you, you're in a position to change other people's lives or have a big budget film or play, and, but yet now you don't call me. You call you call other people. What happened to the people that was there for you when you didn't have anything? And I don't understand that. I see it all the time, and it pisses me off, to be honest with you. But I don't say anything. I keep it going. 
Because what's for me is for me, and what's for you is for you. But just because I don't say anything about it doesn't mean I forgot about it. That doesn't mean I don't think about it. Because you can't forget about anything. You really can't forget about anything of whatever venture that you're doing in terms of filmography. Whether it's television, whether it's a big budget, low budget film. The fact is that you can't forget it. You have to move on if you don't get it, and then you learn from it, and then you know exactly which angle that you need to go from that direction. Otherwise, you're just going around the same circle trying to achieve something that you want, but it's really not going to work out for you if you just keep going around the circle. Yeah, it's just like with, with support. How is it that you, how is it that people support people that they don't know over the people that they might have grew up with? I don't understand that. You go and pay sixteen to a hundred dollars for a ticket for some people that would never have a conversation with you, don't know your name, don't know anything about you, but you want to pay twenty dollars or even something free for somebody that you've been knowing your entire life. I don't understand that. I think that makes me matter than anything, you know. That right there, the non-support of people that you know, or, or even your family members. Honestly, it used to kind of hurt my feelings. And now it just makes me mad. Unfortunately, that's always there. And uh, you know, like you said, loyalty is it's like an up and down type of thing because, sure, it, it's there, but at the same time, it all depends. Sometimes it's uh, supply and demand, and usually there's more demand than any supply going around. Yeah, but these be the same people that have to be on their social media talking about, you got to learn to support each other. You got to show support, but it's just like, wait a minute, I just had a, for instance, I, me being from Dayton, Ohio, Dayton was hit with a tornado, and Dayton was hit with a, the, the gun, you know, the uh, the guy went in and shot shot all his people at the bar. Went home, at first I had to, I had a gift bag giveaway for, you know, people's kids going back to school. You know, I'm thinking it's going to be packed. You know, uh, uh, a movie premiere there for the uh, movie uh, John Wayne's Beer and Mirror. I just knew it was going to be sold out. Nope. I seen people that same day of the premiere saying, man, I can't wait to see your movie tonight. Whoop de whoop, et cetera, et cetera. Didn't even show up. People I went to school with didn't even show up. But, you know, that's how it is. And, and, I, and I peeped it. And I was like, this will never happen to me again. These people don't need to know what I'm doing in my life. Oh, yeah, I had a trigger finger when it came to deleting people. And, 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 I, and I don't care. I had a trigger finger. I probably deleted about mm, maybe 1,200 people in my hometown and don't care. These are the same people, because these are the same people that would call and ask me to do, do the, could you do this? Could you talk to my kid? Could you come to my school? Could you do this? Could you do that? And yeah, and I always do it because I never do anything to get anything in return. But my goodness, when I ask you to do something so we can help somebody else and you don't do it, I'm going to feel some kind of way. And that's exactly how I feel. I was, I was embarrassed. So I did have a trigger finger when it comes to, to deleting people. And some of them might hear this interview once I post it, but now you know. Yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate because sometimes it's like who you know or what you, what you were a part of or whatever, but they don't take the time to learn who you are. They don't take the time to respect who you are, not for what you've done or who you were associated with in your time of, of past or present. Mm-hmm. You will support somebody that you know. I mean, you will support somebody that you don't know over somebody that you do know. And I think that's sad. But it's all good, though. <laughs> Uh, you're still doing what you're doing, man, and that's all that matters. As long as you're happy with what you're doing, that's all that matters, man. Because if you got followers, if anyone decides to tag along and, and for the ride and watch what you do and how you do it, little trinkets of success on your end. And, and I think that's that would be, a to me, I think that would be a fantastic way. That's all you got to do is just be happy for yourself. And, 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 you know, honestly, man, I'm just trying to put myself in a position to take care of the two people who are taking care of me, not just finance, financially, but emotionally and psychologically and spiritually and that's my parents my mom and dad and my 12 grandkids I want to be that grandfather that leaves something for those grandkids I want them to be able to turn the TV on or or pick up the phone and I want them to feel proud of me you know because it's not about money with them it's about love and like oh that's my that's my granddad you know that's the type of thing that, that motivates me the most 
and, and here is, you know, when I, you know, hear people like inbox me and be like, man, you, you changed my life or, you know, thank you for what you posted because you never know who's watching you nowadays. That's why I say you always got to be careful what you say and what you do because kids are watching you, older people are watching you. I don't know, it's just got to be more respectful. And I believe in that. When you have to do your art and having to make it out there and having to get that respect, earn that respect and everything like that. But at some point, you have to put that aside and show who you are outside the door to your family, to your friends and stuff like that. It's like, this is this is one side of me. Now, here's the other side of me right here, right now. This is the, this is the real side. This ain't Oscar from The Walking Dead. This ain't whatever my characters might be in all other shows. I'm Vince in a war before I'm any of those characters. And sometimes people can't separate the two. So it's just like, no, just get to know me first. Then you, you, you understand. That's the kind of thing that everyone should be doing. But go ahead and plug in any websites that you'd like to promote, anything that we can check out right now. Yeah, um, I have a website. It's vincentmward.com. And my social media is all the same. Vincent M. Ward, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of that. I try to keep it simple. And I had to put the M in. A lot of times people are like, well, I tried to contact you. Like, did you put the M in? No. And that's why you can contact me. Oh, definitely, man. So definitely look forward to checking out their new film. And uh, when can we expect this, actually? When do you think this could be released for Stepdaddy? Like, next couple months, maybe next year, mid-next year or so forth? No, 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 no. It'll be next year because we don't start until December. This October, you can check out Devereaux, my, my comic book, Devereaux. Today, we actually went, this is why I actually uh, did this interview late because I was filming another part of conventioning earlier. So um, conventioning, um, I just did a movie in Atlanta called Charm the Hearts of Men with Kelsey Grammer. Um, Mirror Mirror, John Wayne's Mirror Mirror is being some selected theaters October 11th and October 1st. You can catch me in the movie Encounter DVD and Blu-ray. Very and cool. Death House is on. Death House is still on uh, Netflix right now. Oh, nice. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, there you have it, everybody. That is actor Vincent M. Ward. That's me. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the interview.